Welcome back to today's talk. Well, do many of you know what you're eating today? Because I know that we're all busy, on the go, and we're just grabbing what we can to fill our stomachs. Yeah, after you know, those drive through bagels and, you know, just everything fast food pizza. right out of their diet, uh, maybe it's an inability to, you know, to uh, tolerate that particular uh, food group, or perhaps it's word of mouth, uh, yeah. you know, trying yeah. to diet, losing weight, they're having a hard time losing weight. Exactly. Yeah. A lot of people say if you drop the carbs, you know, like you'll start losing losing weight, so yeah. Yes. So, yeah, so a lot of people are trying to, you know, identify their food sensitivities, and that's what it really comes down to, but before you know, starting any particular diet, it is important to discover those sensitivities. So, you know, when a client does come into the office, that's the first thing that I will do is often test, you know, up to 96 different foods with regards to those sensitivities so that you can then remove those from their new lifestyle change that they're going to embark on. Because in the end, those will contribute to health concerns, whether it's bloating, gas, you know, fatigue, um, even sometimes malnutrition with iron deficiency and all kinds of other concerns may come up, you know. How do you yeah. test those, those food deficiency. Yeah, so just with that blood um, spot test, you can do that. And so it's a very quick sp uh, spot test, like as if you're doing those diabetic draws. Um, it soaks up a few cotton swabs and then it's sent out. And then within a couple of weeks, I get all of those results. So at the end of the day, it's a very important to identify those food sensitivities before you even start removing them. Because if you do want to test, the best accuracy you're going to get is from that recent exposure of those foods. So it's important to still consume them so that you can test for them. That's the primary concern for that. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. So tell us a little bit about BMR. Yes. What is BMR? Yeah, so BMR is your basal metabolic rate. So that's how many calories your body requires currently to maintain your weight. So it becomes very easy. If you want to lose weight, you eat less calories or your, your BMR should be less. If you want to gain weight, which some people do, then you want to eat more than your required BMR level is. So let's say, for example, you know, a patient comes into the office, I measure their weight, their fat percentage, their water percentage, and their BMR and let's say the BMR comes up to 1800 calories in essence what I would want to do is maybe bring them down to 1300 calories and then have them consume that amount of food based on categories of food right because obviously you don't want 1300 calories just from like a drive through McDonald's <laughs> <laughs> you want it like a balanced diet right so food groups exactly exactly, exactly it's getting it reaching all of those food groups so then once you reach all those food groups and they're you know eating those 1300 calories and then it's very easy you just shed the weight that way and how would you balance that then so based on uh, their weight and you factor everything so do you have a percentage of protein that you tell them exactly to yep exactly so when it comes down to the categories you know we're looking at things like legumes for example so maybe they're going to eat you know half a serving of beans per day and then you're going to go to things like vegetables and usually when it comes to vegetables there's two categories one is kind of an unlimited like you know lettuce cucumbers tomatoes things like that but then we look at category two vegetables that are more restricted because those are your potatoes your sweet potato you, you know your you more starchy vegetables and then of course your proteins and proteins is very important because it addresses not only your meats and eggs but also various cheeses like cheese like mozzarella cheese ricotta cheese those ones actually have a higher percentage of protein so we look at it in the protein category as opposed to the dairy category okay. um, and then it's also looking at fats you know oils things like avocados olives um, it's looking at nuts seeds um, also your dairy category so that would be your yogurt and your milk but also your dairy alternatives so rice milk Milks, almond milks, you know, those right. kind of things. Yes. Um, and then your grains, because your grains becomes the, you know, the vital part of the, the base of your nutrition, because a lot of people want to go really gun ho on the grains, but at the same time, they need to be restricted. So that would include your gluten-containing grains as well as your gluten-free grains. Okay. Now, what are some of these gluten-free um, grains? Gluten-free grains, yeah. So we're looking at things like, you know, quinoa, we're looking at things like uh, brown rice, buckwheat, and, you know, it's tricky with buckwheat because people see wheat in buckwheat, but it actually doesn't contain any wheat because it's gluten-free so that one's kind of a tricky one and then things like amaranth right okay. um, so the ones you want to be careful of are the ones that contain gluten so the easiest way to remember that is by remembering the word browse so just like your eyebrows so B for barley rye oats whole wheat spelt so those all have gluten in it okay. 
because that's an easy way to remember that. And then everything else is basically gluten-free. Um, so yeah, that's basically how you would want to balance out those food categories. Okay, wow, yeah. that's fantastic. Now there are a long list of diets out there. Yes. Yeah. So I guess, what is, obviously if they come to you, they're going yeah. to get, you know, okay, here's your balance of, uh, you exactly. know, your balance, your protein, your carbs. But with these, like, what, what can you tell people about these diets, like really do their homework? It's really, exactly, it's really do your homework. And, you know, at the end of the day, there's so many diets, like whether you're looking at, you know, Dr. Bernstein, you're looking at metabolic diet with Dr. Poon, or you're looking at, uh, you know, even Atkins or, you know, those kinds of diets. But they're always concentrated on one general area. So maybe you're eating more protein or you're eating, you know, too little carbohydrates or you're eating too many fats. So it's really about getting that complete diet. So at the end of the day, you don't even need to take a multivitamin, for example, because you are having that balanced diet throughout the day, which is very important. Right. Yeah. So speaking of multivitamins, like what are, what are some of the key foods that we should be eating that has omega-3s and the antioxidants? Exactly, and yeah. Good. So, I mean, those are going back to basics with, you know, fish, a lot of berries. So berries are going to give you such a huge amount, you know, when it comes to uh, blueberries, you know, oranges, raspberries, like the berries are going to be your essential antioxidants. And then, of course, okay. your omega-3s are going to come from, you know, the fish oils. Uh, and then you want to concentrate more on nuts or nut butters because those are going to have the good fats. Yes. Uh, even olives. I find a lot of people neglect their olives, but olives actually have that good fat. And olives. Yeah, yeah. Green olives. Yes. Oh, wow. They're my favorite. Yeah. 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 Even my eye doctor was telling me that um, fish, like, he's, you know, having an adequate, uh, uh, I guess, supply of fish in your diet. Exactly. Helps your eyes. It does, yeah. Well, yeah, it's your, um, you know, your hair, your skin, your eyes, everything. Um, and it's not only just from fish. If you don't eat fish, then it's good to supplement with the omega-3 fatty acids, which are, you know, you can get them anywhere now. Yes. So, and they have such huge benefit just with brain development, neurological function, but also cardiovascular health, and, you know, prevention of heart disease. Oh, well, Maria, thank you so much for coming yeah, on the show problem. again and oh. giving us all this useful information. Like, I'm walking away with <laughs> good info here. And oh, it is. It's fantastic. It is. You, uh, you definitely got, we've got lots to talk about with, yeah. you, uh, with you, I think. We do. Right. And now we're going to head over to Houston. We have a problem, and she's got this 101 outdated.